Okay, so welcome back. The next power system we're gonna talk about is a battery operated system. Uh, some places you'll hear it called the recon power system. Some places will call it heavy duty power. Um, again, the battery operated system is gonna give you a lot of torque in the gearing of the hand switches and the hand pieces, and it's gonna give you a lot more power than the traditional corded or micro power system. With that being said, now you have to remember if you're gonna go with a battery powered system, you're gonna need a battery. With that battery, you're gonna need a battery charger. So those are things that you would need to be able to use the system and make it work to its full potential. Without those pieces, the battery powered system is just not gonna work. Here we have, again, for the purpose and the demonstration of this video, we have a Stryker system. This is actually a System 6 version of Stryker's power with a System 6 charger. So with the charger, you have the batteries. And if you notice from the actual image itself, you're gonna say to yourself, hey, Mike, wait a minute. You've got two different types of batteries here. With that, you're always gonna have the ability to run an aseptic battery or just a straight up battery. You say to yourself, why is that important? A lot of places don't want to charge their batteries because they never know when the next time they're going to need a battery. So if they wrap it and they sterilize it and they put it on the shelf, could be two weeks, could be a month before they need it. How is that battery going to stay charged if it's wrapped and run through a cycle? If you're using it the same day, it's probably going to hold the charge but any longer than that, it's not gonna hold a charge. When you go to plug it into the handpiece, it's not gonna work. So that's why they make two different types of batteries for the battery powered system. They make just a standard battery and then they make an aseptic battery. With the aseptic battery, you now have to figure out how do I get this non-sterile battery onto the sterile field? You do that with a transfer shield or an aseptic housing case, and then you use the transfer shield to transfer the non-sterile battery onto the sterile field. The way that works is this is the battery housing. This is the actual battery. This is gonna go into the battery housing. You're gonna take the aseptic battery that's fully charged and bent on the charger you're gonna walk it into the room for the procedure, and then you're gonna place it into the battery housing. The way that works is the scrub technician is gonna set up their battery housing and the transfer shield. They're gonna set that up and they're gonna hold on to that. And then the non-sterile person is gonna come in and they're gonna drop the battery in. Once the battery is in and pushed down, the scrub tech is then gonna hand off the transfer shield and they're gonna close the door on the transfer case and they're gonna lock it into play. Now, this is now a sterile battery. So it came from the non-sterile field into a sterile part and made it a sterile battery. You're then gonna hook it up to your handpiece and you're gonna be able to run it. For this case and this testing, I just used the drill or the saw. <clears throat> For this instance, I used a saw, but you also have the ability to use a universal driver. As you can tell, holding it in my hand, it's a lot bigger and it's a lot heavier. So again, our, what are we using it for? What does the doctor need it for? Does he need it for total joints? total knee, total hip, total shoulder, or is he trying to put a drill pin or a guide wire in for a sports medicine case? If that's the case and that's the procedure, the micro might be a better option for you. But just to give you an overview, again, sterile batteries versus non-sterile batteries, transfer shield, and then the attachments. On the striker end of things, they've made a smaller battery operated handpiece and for this system six, it's called the CD3. As you can tell, when I'm holding it in my hand, it's a lot smaller, but it still has that high torque rate that you would need to drive 
ream pins, wires, reamers. Uh, again, it fits onto the battery and then you have that oscillation mode. So Stryker did end up making a smaller handpiece that was battery operated. With that being said, you then have your attachments. So again, you would need to know what type of system you're using as to what attachment. This is a 4100 pin catlet and it's used to drive a pin, right? So any CD3 handpiece is gonna take a 4100 attachment. Uh, have some different 4100 attachments here. This is just a standard version of the Jacobs Chuck and that's how that works. So again, depending on what handpiece you have is gonna really depend on what type of attachments you would need. So you need to make sure that you're communicating with the sales rep and you let them know, I'm ordering a CD3, what attachments do I need? And the sales rep will be able to help you out figuring out what's the best needs for you and what you need to run it. If you can tell from a System 6, it's a lot higher, a lot heavier, bigger handpiece, but the chuck, where it chucks from the handpiece to the attachment is different. With that being different, you would need different attachments. Clicks in, and then you could drill or you could ream, right? Again, higher torque handpiece, it's gonna be used in bigger bone procedures, but the fatigue on the surgeon is gonna be there because the handpiece weighs a considerable amount over a micro or a corded system. So in conclusion, battery systems, hand pieces are a little bit heavier. Uh, it's a battery system, so obviously you would need a battery and then you would need a battery charger. And then what type of battery would you need? Would you want a sterile battery or would you want a non-sterile battery? With the sterile batteries, it's nice. You open it up, the battery's sterile, it's on the sterile field, attach it to the hand. But if you're in between times of usage, the charge could go down on the battery, which is why they make an aseptic battery, but then you need the transfer case, you need a transfer shield, and you have to have a way to get the non-sterile battery onto the sterile field. So it's a little bit more challenging from an aseptic standpoint, but then your batteries are always charged and they're ready to go. So it definitely benefits you there. Again, for the purpose of this demonstration, we're using the Striker system, but all the other manufacturers make a battery powered system. Uh, Synthes makes one, Hall, ConMed, Lindatech, they all make battery operated systems. So determining on what the best system for you is and what the needs are is definitely gonna be the best factor in determining whether you need a cord, corded, micro, or you want battery operated.